Conservative Book Club members, thank you for listening to our weekly author interview podcast series. I'm Chris Malagisi, editor-in-chief of the Conservative Book Club, now with over 660,000 members across the country. Today, we have a truly special author interview with Tracy Stratford, who is the author of three new children's Peanuts books, writing for Charles Schultz, who was the famous cartoonist who created the Charlie Brown Peanuts comic strip. If you don't recognize Tracy's name, you might remember her as the voice of Lucy in the beloved 1965 television special, A Charlie Brown Christmas. Uh, Most people remember Charlie Brown Peanuts comic strip growing up, and some may be surprised to know that Charles Schultz created almost 18,000 comic strips throughout a period of 50 years from 1950 to 2000, and is considered to be the most influential comic strip in history. Peanuts ran in over 2,600 newspapers with a readership of over 355 million in 75 countries in over 20 languages, which eventually earned Schultz an over an estimated $1 billion in lifetime income. He unfortunately passed away, though, in 2000, the, the day before his last original Peanuts comic strip appeared. But Tracy, who's with us here today, has channeled her inner Charles Schultz to once again bring alive the characters of Charlie Brown, Lucy, Linus, Snoopy, Schroeder, and, of course, Peppermint Patty. Tracy is currently a school librarian in Washington State and has created a K-12 drama program producing four shows a year for the past 17 years. Her new books, Hooray for Liberty, Charlie Brown, It's a New World, Charlie Brown, and Western Ho, Charlie Brown, attempt to teach children, and perhaps some adults too, American history and why America is an exceptional nation. Tracy, congratulations on your new books, published by Regnery, and we're honored to have you at the Conservative Book Club today. Oh, thank you so much. I really appreciate it, and I'm happy to be here. So it's going to be fun. Yeah, for sure, of course, always is. So, Tracy, there are so many things I want to ask you, but first, tell us about your three new books for our members, many of them parents, always looking for patriotic books their children can read, but tell us a little bit about your books. Okay. Um, Well, first of all, for me, especially with my background growing up acting, um, and then my move into directing, and then my move into becoming a librarian, um, story has always, always, always been incredibly important to me. Because as an actor, if you don't have a good story, you don't have a good show, whatever it happens to be. Uh Same same with directing. Um, And so as a librarian, too, and as a reader myself, I think I love story. Story is the most important thing. And for kids, especially younger students, story is the hook that gets kids interested in researching and discovering on their own. Um, And there are so many wonderful, wonderful stories surrounding our country, surrounding our history. And a lot of times, Unfortunately, they're just presented as facts and dates on this date. You know, and we all remember, you know, Columbus sailed the ocean blue in what year? Well, mm-hmm. 1492. Um, but you see, if you use story, just like you use music or you use rhyme, it automatically goes into your longer-term memory, whereas if you're just memorizing facts and dates, that goes into your short-term memory banks and is is gone after a short period of time. So really my intent and the intent here is to get kids, give them that hook and get them interested in some of the stories of these foundationally important people in time. And it, and it could not have come at a better time as I was just researching that the 2014 National Assessment of Education Progress reports that only 18% of eighth graders are proficient in U.S. history. You know, it's it's obvious you wrote this book to try to educate um, children on on U.S. history. But give me your thoughts on that. I mean, obviously, as a library, you're working uh, directly with a lot of readers and children. Um, are you seeing this too? This lack of civics understanding. Um. Yes. Well. Yes and no. I have. I mean, I worked in in um, four four school districts, mm-hmm. and um, and yes, I see. I have seen some of this in because of things that that teachers are forced to teach, like adapting and teaching to a new state test mm-hmm. every three or four years. 
Um, a lot of stuff is set by the wayside, just you know, just like the arts too, because they have to cram in other things that are deemed more important. And I say that with quotation marks around it. <laughs> um, and um, also, if you're only teaching the kids facts, like I said, it's not going into your long-term memory, and there is no real reason to be interested, and so there's no real reason to really understand what some of this is all about. So, but in my building currently, where I'm teaching high school, I used to be with elementary, but now I'm teaching mm -hmm. with high school teachers, we teach a lot of AP courses, and the one thing that I've noticed about my AP teachers, um, and especially my AP history teachers, my AP civics, AP um, psych, AP economics, those teachers are phenomenal at hooking kids with the story. And our kids are doing so well in history because these people do such an excellent job in getting kids hooked on the story and then the kids are investigating further on their own and they're passing their AP tests with yeah. <laughs> really good scores. Those te teachers the, uh, the most underappreciated profession around, for sure. Uh, we're talking with Tracy Stratford, who's the author of the new Charlie Brown Peanuts books that just came out and, and uh, was also the voice of Lucy on the 1965 television special, A Charlie Brown Christmas. So, Tracy, <clears throat> out of all the questions I have to ask you, the first one I really wanted to know is, why, why, why were you, why Lucy, why was she so mean to sweet old Charlie Brown? Why, why would you never let him kick the football? <laughs> <laughs> I think she's trying to teach him those lessons of trust. They can't always quite trust every, what everyone says. <laughs> yeah. Why, why do you believe, uh, or what do you believe is the enduring legacy of the Peanuts comic strip? And why, for so, I mean, it's been, God, over 60 years now that it's been out. Why do you think it has such long-lasting power, and, and what do you think of, it, of its legacy? Well, you know, I think Charles Holtz, at his heart, um, at the heart of everything that he did was such a, <clears throat> just a loving, kind human being. And you see that reflected in his characters. Having, having children, all of the little, the kids, Charlie Brown, Sally, Linus, Schroeder, Lucy, um, and especially Snoopy, having the kids actually walk through life, little mini life scenarios and solve problems themselves. And, in, and the way he did it was just incredible because he never talked down to kids, even though his characters were kids. No one was, and adults could get it too, but no one was ever talked down to, no one was ever made fun of, no one was ever put down, and they always ended up being uplifting, even when Lucy pulled the football out from Charlie Brown's kick. Mm -hmm. um, it still was never, no one ever talked down, not like, not like you hear today, um, you know, where every, every time you hear somebody talk about somebody else, especially with politics. There's, there's never any common ground where you can actually discourse. Um, it's, it's all about who can put down who better. Mm -hmm. And so there was never any of that with Charles Schultz, with any of the Peanuts characters. And I think that's one of the enduring legacies, is that it's just slices of human life, but everything has an overlay of kindness to it. Mm -hmm. did, did you ever personally meet Charles Schultz? And if you did, what was your impression of him? Um, you know, I never did. Um, Peter Robbins, Chris Shea, and um, I were based out of Los Angeles, um, and we worked with um, Bill Melendez. And everyone else, Charles Schultz included, they were all up in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. And so um, our paths never crossed. And by the time they did um, one of the big celebrations where they had everyone who's ever been a Charlie Brown character at all, so there were <laughs> adults 
all the way down to little kids, um, Charles Schultz had already passed. So wow. um, we never, I never got to meet him. Oh. It was very unfortunate. Yeah, no. You know, I, I saw, you know, I, I grew up, I, I was born in 1981, and I remember Peanuts uh, growing up, and I remember people older than me, you know, just loved Peanuts. Just they, they always talked about it, and, and uh, you know, I, I didn't know much about Charles Schultz. I actually watched the PBS documentary of, about him uh, about an hour and 20 minutes last night, and um, I just didn't realize what an amazing individual this his was his work ethic and um, his inspiration yeah. for his characters and Lucy in particular. I, I'm curious, you know, I I they they your thoughts on this? You know, they always talked about his inspiration for his characters were based on real people, and I had heard that Lucy mm-hmm. was perhaps based on his ex-wife. Was <laughs> did I hear that wrong? Or and Linus was actually a friend of his, and there actually was a real Charles Brown before. <laughs> I actually heard that his uh, that Lucy was based on his daughter when she was younger. Oh. Uh, because and he called her persnickety. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. But, you know, she really wanted things to go the way she wanted things to go. <laughs> okay. okay, and that actually makes sense. Yeah, no, it, it, I was doing some research on it, and they said uh, he, he had two friends in his art school growing um, when he was at the Art Institute, and there was a Charles M. Brown, and that Linus mm-hmm. was a friend of his, and that Lucy, if not started off, but ended up being his, is kind of uh, based on his ex-wife, so I thought it was kind of interesting, <laughs> but... Um, <laughs> mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, what, and just lastly, you know, Tracy, what... Um, what, what's your, do you want to do more of this, or what do you feel that, uh, p- if you have any advice for parents on the type of books that their children should read, um, can you offer any advice to those parents? Well, um, you know, I, I think that as a, as a parent myself and as a grandparent, um, I think that books are twofold. There's books that you can really learn from, and um, which are obviously more nonfiction books, and then books that, you know, are just for pleasure or escape, you know, summer reading books. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think as parents and as grandparents, I think a really great thing is to look for those books that speak to the story and the truth that you and that you share those with your kids. And sometimes it's even incredibly valuable, and I've seen this as a librarian, those books that you completely disagree with when your kids are a little bit older, um, reading those with kids, but doing it in such a way that you're having a learning opportunity. Mm -hmm. Um, There is a tremendous value in that as well. But honestly, I think that books, uh, especially if you want to engage your children. Not all kids have the opportunity to go to museums. Who Not all kids have the opportunity or the parents have the opportunity to take them traveling throughout the world or even across our nation. Um, and so I think the more things you can expose kids to so that our kids are well-grounded, have a great understanding of who we are as Americans, who we are as a culture, and who they are as individuals and what your own family values are. I think those those things that you can share with your kids and read to them, and whether it's a book you agree with or a book you disagree with, there's opportunity for rich dialogue and rich conversation. But my hope with these books is that for those kids who what the Declaration of Independence was about, or yeah, they've heard that you know people migrated across the country from the East Coast to the West Coast. But really, what was that like? Yeah. And helping kids understand from a child perspective what that must have been like. And so that is my hope um, with these books, and these definitely. I mean, they're geared 
pictures wise are geared toward four to seven year olds, but not all the words will be accessible to a four year old. Mm -hmm. So in that instance, I'm hoping that parents will jump in and read these to their kids, and then they can they can talk about it. Well, and everybody can. Well, it's it's wonderful books, and everybody should pick up a copy of it, and uh, we'll definitely have it up on our website and promote it. And Tracy, you know, thank you for taking the time to talk with us today. We wish you all the best of luck on your three books, and hope everyone, especially parents, will buy them for some fun summer vacation reading. It would be fun, and I certainly do appreciate taking the time and, and chatting with you. It's been just wonderful. Thank well, you. Well, we appreciate it. And CBC members, make sure to check out conservativebookclub.com to learn more about Tracy and her new Charlie Brown Peanuts books. Thank you again, Tracy. Thank you.